be quite timely. I saw this new video that came up and you know, it's Renee um, answering questions. This is, you know, Renee is really good for um, putting out videos and then saying some stuff and just basically saying the same thing that a lot of people say, oh, you got to read the context, which is like, okay, yeah, you can say it's the context, but then she says things like it's hyperbole. To say something's hyperbole is like saying it's a lie. And it says God cannot lie. So I don't know when you start saying, well, it's hyperbole and it's all that's your way of trying to explain things away. Right. So I think when you got to beware of anybody who says, oh, that's hyperbole. OK, now we're going to look, watch this video and I'm going to show you something. I told you these Trinitarians can't be consistent. Listen to this. in the Bible that you can prove to be false, not that you... Easy enough. Genesis 32.30 says that Jacob saw God face to face. Exodus 33 says that Moses saw God face to face. But John 1.18 and 1 Timothy 6.16 both say that no one has ever seen God. So if these verses are true, then these are false and vice versa. Important to take each... So guys, how, do you, how would you answer that scripture? How will you answer that scripture? Let's go back to let's go back to um, let's go back to what the guy is saying. This guy is saying, "How do you prove the Bible is true?" Because it seems to have all these contradicting statements. Let's listen to what the guy says again. I challenge anybody to find one piece of information in the Bible that you could prove to be false. Not that you. Easy enough. Genesis thirty-two thirty says that Jacob saw God face to face. Exodus 33 says that Moses saw God face to face. But John 1.18 and 1 Timothy 6.16 both say that no one has ever seen God. So if these verses are true, then these are false and vice versa. Important to take each scripture in its... Let's look at this. I want to go back. I'm sorry. I want to go back. Go back. Sorry. I want to pull up the verse you're talking about. But John 1.18 and 1 Timothy 6.16... John 1 18. Let's go. Let's go to John 1 18 first. John 1 18. Yeah, here it is. <clears throat> no man has seen. It says, it doesn't say no one. It says no man. It's really important that you leave the word man. No man has seen God at any time. Okay. And then what's he including? Is it? Let's see. Let's go back. I want to make sure. Both say that no one face to face, but John one eighteen and First Timothy six sixteen. And First Timothy six sixteen. Again, it says no man. This is why when they change the scriptures, guys, and they replace the word man with one, it's really detrimental. It's no man has seen God at any time. And we're going to talk about why that's important. Okay. Now I'm going to show you why I'm going to show you why this is the case, but I'm going to let Renee, the untwisted sister, so-called untwisted for you, because again, I tell you, she believes the Trinity and she's going to have to deny the Trinity to answer this. Listen, say that no one has ever seen God. So if these verses are true, then these are false and vice versa important to take each scripture in its proper context there are a lot of things said in scripture that are hyperbole it doesn't say that the scripture is hyperbole that's renee just making stuff up again ms figures of speech and so forth so it says signified signified some things are signified look at this we have to check all the surrounding text and see what it's talking about. Now, this person has... Uh, the surrounding text doesn't get around the fact that it says... 
Moses saw God face to face and talks about other people seeing God face to face. And then it says, it says their name. It didn't say the man. It says their name saw face to face. And then it says, no man has seen God right at any time. And here it says, no man whom no, no man has seen. And by the way, just, just, just to show you, this is talking about Jesus, the only potentate. No man has seen nor can see. How is Renee going to answer this? Because you got to remember, guys, the mortal body that was raised with the wounds in the hands, Romans 8, 11. You have to, don't forget, don't be a forgetful hearer. Because the, I, I keep hearing people, people keep coming into the comments and they're saying stuff. And I'm like, you can come into the comments all you want, make up lies. But, okay, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead, only a mortal can die. Listen, he shall also quicken your mortal bodies. So the body, the wounds, handle me and see that it is I myself, a spirit hath not flesh and bones. Flesh, bones, see. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Then he says, and while they be yet believe not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, have ye any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of honeycomb. Okay. Broiled fish and honeycomb. A broiled fish, guys, is broiled fish eternal? No, it's not. So you can't disconnect. See, people wonder, why did God put in, why, did, why is it written in the scriptures that he ate? broiled fish that's called a dead fish and honeycomb and honeycomb and i'm sure there's a reason for the honeycomb i have to look into the process of how honey's made how how bees deal with the honey and the honeycomb i'm sure if i looked into it i'd just be even more like amazing why it's included because of some kind of process or something you know with the pollination all that kind of stuff you know so again how are you going to get around this Right. He had wounds in his hands. How are you going to say? And it's like, oh, so the eternal, immortal God has wounds in his hands. OK. Again, we're going to go back. And it's going to say who only have immortality. And we just saw that the body that was raised, it says also quicken your mortal bodies. Go forward. Also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit. So no one's denying that God can raise a dead body from the grave. No one's denying that God, who's a spirit named Jesus, comes fashioned as a man. But he can come fashioned in the form of any man. And by the way, just so you guys know, Renee claims to have... To, Renee is... Anybody who claims that they are so-called saved, they're saying God has come fashioned as them. Did you know that? Any, any man who claims to be saved, what they're saying is they've been... Their mortal body has been quickened, right? But they're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. They're in the resurrection of the living, not the dead, right? That's why it says the dead, mortal body that's risen, dead body, in Christ, in him we live and move and have our being. Okay, so let's, let's listen to Renee. She's going to answer this. Let's go. I'm going to go back to the question. I want to make sure you guys hear it. Sorry. I'll make sure you hear it. Okay. I challenge anybody to find one piece of information in the Bible that you could prove to be false. Not that you... Easy enough. Genesis 32.30 says that Jacob saw God face to face. Exodus 33 says that Moses saw God face to face. But John... So Jacob and Moses saw God face to face. That's what it says, right? 19 and 1 Timothy 6.16 both say that no one has ever seen God. So if these verses are true, it says no man, which no man has seen or can see. Let's, let's make sure. I want you guys to see this. Only potentate. Because I, I want you to see, because Renee's talking about the context. And, and God's going to say, uh, well, the context is in the past and in, and in the future. <laughs> That's the context. So, you know, you guys, you can't get around this talk the, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his time he shall show forth who is the blessed and only potentate 
King of Kings, Lord of Lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach. Saying you can't even approach him. Right? Who no man hath seen nor can see. That's the context. Okay? That's the context. So all this stuff about hyperbole. Let's, let's, let's listen. And these are false and vice versa. Important to take each scripture in its proper context. There are a lot of things said in scripture that are hyperbole, idioms, figures of speech, and so forth. So when we look at this, we have to check all the surrounding text and see what it's talking about. Now, this person has uh, seemed to think they have found a contradiction. Now, first of all, I'd like to say that God is a spirit. Did you guys hear that? This hypocrite. This utter hypocrite. Listen to this. However, we do see God manifesting in forms in the Old Testament. She did not want to say manifest in the flesh. Guys, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Like, this is what I'm saying. This, this woman is such a devil. I mean, 1 Timothy 3.16, God is a spirit. He comes fashioned as a man. This is why in 1 Timothy 3.16, without controversy, graves the mystery of godliness, right? If he comes in all these forms fashioned as a man, then you're like, well, I can't see God. I can't see. All I see is a man standing for me. But where's God? Well, he comes fashioned as a man. He comes manifest, <clears throat> manifest in the flesh. And Renee is, is specifically leaving out this, this, this word flesh. Listen, he was manifest in the flesh, but listen to this, justified in the spirit. And by the way, no man has seen, seen of angels. That's all of us. We're ministering spirits, seen of angels ministering spirits see you can't get around this ruins the whole lie of the trinity ruins the lie of the chosen race let's see how renee answers this guys i'm, I'm really curious let me see where am i at let's let's, let's see how she answers this I'm, I'm really curious we call them christophanies but we see that god again people keep using these words christophanies Stop trying to sound it. That's how I know these people read these these like stupid commentaries. We call them Christophanies. Like, shut up. Shut up. God comes fashioned as a man. It's say it how the scripture is right. He comes fast. Listen, let me show you guys. Fashion as a man. That's what you say, fashioned as a man. But God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Fashioned as a man. Now it makes sense when you hear God is not a man. What do you mean? No man has seen nor can see, but he's a man himself. You sound like a fool. Okay, my, my bad. Let me go back. He's <laughs> like, uh, God is not a man, but we believe in the God man. Okay. Wait, wait, let me go back one more time. Sorry. Forgive me guys on this. Sorry. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and he shall not do it. Hath he spoken and he shall not make it good. No, notice the he, 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 he. See, come in fashion, manifest in the flesh is different. God is not flesh. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Right? Let's see what Renee is going to say, guys comes with two angels in the form of men and they you, are you guys hearing this i want to go back to the beginning because i just think it's really important because she just she her whole thing that she was trying to 
rebut and she's just going against when i said look no god's a spirit her whole thing is like we're not just spirits that's what she just said renee said we're not just floaty spirits about now this person has uh seemed to think they have found a contradiction now first of all i'd like to say that god is a spirit however we do see god manifesting do you do i mean are you guys are you i mean Trinitarians can never, they can never stick. And you're like, well, oh, that's right. You mean he's the head, the savior of the body? You know how the word God head, he's the head, the savior of the body, right? And the spirit and the bride say come. He's the head. God is a spirit. There's no three distinct persons. That would be three heads and three bodies. And it says, there's no three persons. There's only one person and he's the head, the savior of the body. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. Will ye accept his person? Will ye contend for God? There's no three persons. Right? Right? It is good that he should search you out. God searches the heart. Or as one man mocketh another, do ye so mock him? Well, guys, did... <clears throat> I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. Oh, Renee, did you know they, they smote and mocked God? Listen, listen, well, listen. Listen. See, we're going to find out a lot of stuff today, boy. These Trinitarians, boy, be not deceived. God is not mocked. You sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. You sow into the spirit, you shall the spirit reap life everlasting. He that sow into his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that sow into the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So you sow into the spirit. What kind of body is it? Because he's the head, the savior of the body. He says you sow into the what? Spirit. And he says the last item is a quickening what? Spirit and Renee is saying, well, it looks like men, but he said came with his angels. What are the angels? They're ministering spirits. No man has seen God at any time. Oh, without controversy, he grazed the mystery of God and his God was manifest in the flesh. God is not a man that he shall lie, neither son of man that he should repent. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Justified in the spirit. Seen of what? Angels. No man has seen nor can see in forms in the old testament we call them christophanies in the old testament he came in forms oh okay okay renee you know when he ate the dead fish which look no man has seen nor can see okay look at this look at this guys listen now when jesus was written early the first day of the week he appeared first to mary magdalene out of whom he cast seven devils and she went and told him that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. Why? Because they're saying, well, this is the same one that was dead, but God can't die. Apparently God can't die because God's eternal. He only has immortality, right? Right. And he says, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. So apparently if you can't approach him, uh, clearly they approached the man, Jesus, and they killed him. Okay. After that, he appeared. Uh oh. In another form unto the two of them as they walked into the country. And they went and told us the residue, neither believe they him, they them. Afterwards, he appeared unto the eleven of them as they sat at meat and abraded them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which seen him after he was risen. Right? After he was risen, handle me and see, a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. And he says, Go preach the gospel to every creature. Lo, I <laughs> listen. He that believes and is baptized, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into what kind of body? A spiritual body, Renee, the one that you deny, right? He that believeth not shall be damned, right? You're condemned because of your unbelief of sin because they believe not on me. 
but we see that good L- listen. forms listen. about now this person has uh seemed to think they have found a contradiction now first of all i'd like to say that god is a spirit however we do see god manifesting in forms in the old testament we call them christophanies but we see that god comes with two angels we call them christophanies no it's that these every time they invent a word they're inventing a word to try to hide their heresy what do you mean christophanies no god is a spirit named jesus who comes fashioned in the likeness of the son of man and there's many fashions of son of men but the son of men are not the children of god he just comes fashioned as the son of men in the form of men and they sit down and eat with abraham so abraham saw god face to face in a sense okay no no does it say abraham saw god face to face in a sense does the scripture say abraham saw god face to face in a sense where does it say no here's what it says and here's where renee is going to be confound a liar as always as always guys whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth had not seen him neither known him listen If ye had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. You know him and have seen him. So if I seen him and you're not flesh. You just come fashion as a man. That's why it says henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. And that's why it says wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Because God comes fashion in the form of a man, right? God is not a man. God is a spirit, right? Which no man hath seen nor can see. Seen of angels. Listen, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Because now we're what? Angels henceforth ye know him and have seen him. And if you want to ask, well, what do you mean we are angels, Marcus? You go to Revelation. By the way, it's called the Revelation of Jesus. And it says, And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel. Listen, seen of angels. Without controversy, grace, the mystery of Godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of what? Seen of angels, right? Seen of angels. I fell down before the feet of the angels which showed me these things. And then it says, listen, then saith he, the angel unto me, see that thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, God, whom I serve with my spirit and of thy brethren. The angel is your brother. Right. No man had seen him at any time, neither in the past or in the future. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach, which no man hath seen nor can see. So this is all this lie about the so-called Jewish race, all this lie about God being three white man. Now Renee's caught in her lies and she can't answer. And now she's trying to say, well, in a sense, no, it's talking about all of us who believe it says we're angels. It says, I'm going to, I'm just going to show you guys that Renee's lying. Talking about of thy brethren, take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. It talks about we who offer them a cup in his name. Listen. It told him to go preach the gospel, right? For whosoever should give you a cup of water, let whosoever come take and drink of the water of life freely, right? Listen, let whosoever come, the spirit, God is a spirit, the head, the savior of the body, right? 
Will ye accept his person as many as received him? Receive ye the spirit, right? By the works of the law, the hearing of faith. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you what? My sheep hear my voice. I know them. I give unto them eternal life. Live according to God in the spirit. The gospel is preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh. Children of the flesh are not the children of God. God is called the father of spirits. I fell down at the feet of the angel which showed me these things. He says, see that thou doest not, for I am of thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets. Because you belong to Christ, verily I say, he shall not lose his reward. Because what? Now that you believe, we what? He that win his souls is wise. And since it's God that worketh in us, the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only what? Wise God. Isn't that beautiful? And so what God is saying, these little ones, listen. And whosoever shall fin, and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones. This is talking about us, the children of God. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. It's talking about us offering them the living water. Right? Come, take, drink. It's just talking about the gospel. And then it says, For I say unto you that in heaven, listen, no man has seen God at any time. Their angels do what? Always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. Always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. Always. Renee just did a video saying, no, we're not. We're not. We don't become spirits. We, we, we're not just floaty spirits. We're not like little Casper to ghost. It says I fell down at the feet of the angel. Letting you know that there is a spiritual body. All this lie about, oh, there's some kind of physicality and all this kind of stuff. That's called setting up a straw man. Who said anything about the, this physicality and disgusting? All you're trying to do is you're trying to get back to the flesh. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. It says that which is born of flesh is flesh. That was born of spirit of spirit. God is called the father of spirits. And it says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. It says he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Neither is he worshiped with men's hands. Let all the angels worship him. Scene of angels. Scene of angels. I fell down at the feet of the angel which showed me these things. He says, see that thou doest not. For I am of thy fellow servant, God whom I serve with my spirit. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit, is God that worketh in you to do unto will of his good pleasure. This is the will of him that sent me, that you believe on the one that he sent. I'm offering you a cup of water to drink. Come on, who lets whoever come and take and drink of the water of life freely? But people are offended. Renee's, Renee's offended, guys. She thought God was a white man. Look at her video. She's got God is a white man to Renee. The Trinitarians all believe God's three, two to three white man. They almost like we believe in one God. No, you don't believe God's a spirit. Stop your lying. They don't believe he's a spirit. They don't believe he's the father of spirits. They think they think this world, which is temporal, they think this is real. And she just, Renee cannot fathom that there's a spiritual body. She can't, she can't. She's like, I can't imagine a oh, spiritual body. What, what in the world? I told you. She says she came from the Hebrew roots movement. Renee hasn't come from nothing. She's still in that heresy deep. For who server shall she, she jumped out of one frying pan into the other frying pan. <laughs> who server shall give you a cup of water in my name? And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, that's telling you who it is because it says you believe on him to everlasting life. And it says we're all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation. And what Renee doesn't like is it says salvations of the Jews. And then it says, I know those who say there are Jews and are not, but are synagogues of Satan. And Renee in her other videos like, don't go giving me the synagogue of Satan stuff. This is what Renee is saying. She doesn't believe who God's people are. She really doesn't. It says God's called the father of spirits. A Jews one inwardly circumcised that by the heart in the spirit. We are the circumcision which rejoice where? In Christ. Right? We are the circumcision rejoice in Christ. We are the circumcision worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. We are the circumcision who worship God, who rejoice, who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. God, the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth and truth. 
It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. His spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. It could have said, well, his spirit bears witness with our flesh and blood. No, it doesn't say that. It completely doesn't say that. Take heed, ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my father. What does it say? Scene of angels without controversy, grace, the mystery of godness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Scene of angels preached to the what? Dead Gentiles. Wait a minute. It's, if the gospel is preached to the dead and there's people claiming to be a light to all nations. And but it says they haven't believed the gospel. So either you either Renee doesn't understand that God's God of living and not the dead. And we just judge that one died for all. Then we're all dead. And Jesus said, he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believeth thou this. And it says, once you believe you're no longer in the flesh, but in the spirit. It's just that your mortal body, which is no longer you, has been quickened. As Paul says in Romans 7, another verse that Rene twists all the time. Paul's not saying, well, you know, it's a battle between my flesh and my spirit. No, Paul's saying, no, the things that are done in the flesh, that's no more I. That is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. You go from Romans 7 to Romans 8 and it says, I am not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Because Christ is in me, the hope of glory. And the seed, which is the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever, which will never leave you or forsake you, Christ Jesus. He's saying, God who's in you will never leave you nor forsake you. He that joins to the Lord, God is one spirit. And that's why it says, Colossians 3, you're dead, not in the flesh, you are, but live according to God in the spirit. You're in God. You understand? That's why it says scene of angels. That's what it says, this guy. Like it's listen, <laughs> let's look. take heed, you despise not one of these little ones, right? That believe in me. It's talking about us, right? <laughs> this is why he's saying, look, all of you guys who think you're gonna do something in your flesh, he's saying, look. If your hand offend thee, cut it off, all this stuff. He's like, look, you're trying to glory in the flesh where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. He said, if foot offend thee, he says, he's going, he's just telling them all this stuff that look, you, you got to believe the truth. And he said, flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who should be heirs of salvation? Right? I mean, so guys, don't tell me it's not beautiful. This is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> tell me, don't tell me this is not beautiful. Scene of angels. That's what it says. Scene of angels. But what it means when it says Moses talked to God face to face as a friend would, it just means in a close, intimate manner. Uh, She's just explaining stuff away. How does that saying it's in a close, intimate manner? How does that explain away the verse? No man has seen God at any time. How does that explain the way which no man has seen nor can see? And by the way, why didn't Renee include the, you're so, you're, you're trying to teach. Why didn't Renee put the, put the verses up? Well, let's, let's, let's pull up the gentleman's verses. Oh, this is Jesus dwelling in the light, which the only potentate who only hath immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. Oh, wait a minute. Here's another verse. It says, Jesus Christ says he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, invisible. And then it says here, the only wise God It says Jesus is the only wise God, but he's eternal, immortal, invisible. Let's see. Is the flesh eternal? No. Is the flesh immortal? No, it died. Is the flesh invisible? No, it could be seen. Handle me and see. So is the flesh the only wise God? Of course not. So what do we conclude if it says Jesus is the only wise God? Well, it's talking about the spirit of Jesus. Exactly. God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him spirit and truth. Then you can say, well, let me show you Well, you're saying that Jesus is the father. Yes, we're saying that God is a spirit and he's the father, the word, the son and the Holy Ghost. And you say, well, can you show me that he's the father? Yes. Let's go to Revelation 21, 9 through 10. And it says, come, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. We go to Revelation. Let's do it because maybe this will be the first time. Some, some of you guys may be the first time looking at this uh, video. So let's let's go ahead and show you. Yeah. Can you show me that God is a spirit and he's he's the father, the son and the Holy Ghost? Right. And he came and seven angels came 
the vials and says, talk to me, come hither, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So it says, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife, right? I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. He carried me away in the, wait a minute, there it is, in the spirit. Justified, justified in the spirit. Without controversy, grace the mystery of God. God was manifest in the flesh, what? Justified in the spirit, seen of angels. He carried me away in the spirit. Are they not all ministering spirits to a great and high mountain and showed me? Right? I fell at the feet of the angel that showed me these things. And he says, he that thou doest not. For I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets. Of thy brethren, the prophets. The sons of God. Right? Then he says, listen. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, holy Jerusalem. So we see that the lamb who's married to the bride. And we know it's the spirit and the bride say come. So we know the lamb is the spirit. And he's the head, the savior of the body. The spirit and the bride say come. And he says, well, this is the bride of the lamb is Jerusalem. So then we go to Galatians 4, 26. And we say, well, okay, the lamb has a bride. Do they have any children? Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. So we know the lamb does have children. And those who are the children of God, are they born after the flesh or are they born after the spirit? He that was born after the flesh persecute him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Who's the head, the savior of the body? The spirit and the bride say come. Who's the good shepherd? The as men are led by the spirit. What are we born after? Are we born after flesh and blood? Or are we born after? We're born after the spirit. After the, after the image of him that created us. After the spirit. Angels. Scene of angels. God told Moses that no one could see his face and live. What that means is no one could observe God in all his glory, in his natural state, and survive. And what do you mean his natural state? I, I thought, wait a minute, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. In his natural state, I thought you said it was three persons and the second person of the so-called blessed trinity. He said he was one person, two natures. Now you're saying in his natural state. What is that? Is that spirit or is that flesh? Because the Trinity says one person of the three distinct persons, even though we say we'll accept this person. The Trinity teaches there's three distinct persons with a second person being one person, two natures, co-equal and co-eternal. So apparently there's a lie. The Trinity is kind of a lie. You know, guys, don't you see it's an abomination? It's, it's an idol. Glory in his no one could observe God in all his glory in his natural state and survive it. Uh, in the scriptures, it says he's an all consuming fire. So certain things have to be done for a mortal person to be in the presence of immortal, eternally existing, self existing. No, he says, he says, which no man can approach. No man can approach. Guys, okay, we, let's. I, I don't. I don't like when people do stuff like this. It says which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. Okay, I just want to make sure because I don't like when people sit here and lie. Which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. Let me see. Man, how many? How many? How many times did I go back? Here? Okay, here we go. Which no man can approach into, which no man has seen or can see. Okay. All powerful God Almighty. So, with that being said, let's just look at the scriptures real quick. You'll, and he actually says this Please clearly. Do. Please show me the scriptures. in Exodus, okay, that you can't look at him and live. And you, and you just said, you said God is a spirit, but that's not what you guys teach. The Trinity does not teach God is a spirit. Now they're trying to say the spirit is flesh, right? Because remember, the body that had the wounds is flesh and bones, right? But they, they came in another form. When they're trying to tell you that the Bible's a lie and it's corrupt, they never explain these things. And most of them don't actually know it. They're wow. That is rich. Looking for things to pick at to destroy your faith. 
because they don't have it. So, no, you're the one who doesn't have faith because you're the one who's tried to make God a white man, three white men, in fact. So you need to stop with your life. Renee just did something talking about, oh, have you heard about the pilot papers? And they describe Jesus and they say, you know, he was blind. They say he didn't look like the red of the so the other so-called people who are surrounding him. They try to make God a blonde white man. Um, Exodus chapter 33, if you go to 20, it says, and he said, thou cannot see my face for there shall no man see me and live. How many faces do you have? You cannot see my face. How many faith? I mean, I understand there's God head, but according to the Trinity, there's three heads. Thou can't see our faces. If you see me, you see the father. That's like, that's why they throw three. They draw, they draw three white men. <laughs> you see me, you see the father. I just show you that Jesus is the father and there's only one God, a spirit, right? So he tells them, I'll let you see the back of me as I pass by. So you can see some of my glory. Oh, you mean as many as are led by the spirit? Oh, the good shepherd is a spirit? Okay, that, that's what it means. But you can see God face to face if he comes in the form of a person. Or for instance, you can see God face to face if he comes in the form of a person. Now Renee is trying to go back to the flesh. So if he comes in the form of a person and what so-called pray, please pray tell what, what, what kind of person would he come in the form of Renee? Cause you know where these guys are going. You know what all these so-called, I'm not a Zionist. I'm not a, Hey guys, come on. She just basically went full circle in lies. She just said God is a spirit. Now she's saying, well, you can see him face to face. No, Renee, what it says, it says, listen, whom no man has seen nor can see. It doesn't say, now, Renee, what we want you to do is try to do another bad job. Look, Renee, I understand why you didn't make it in Hollywood. You're, you're horrible. You're script right. What, what the hell are you producing but lies? This is horrible. Like what you're saying makes no sense. Like you're trying to ins I just like when people just insult everyone's intelligence, this is what I'm talking about. Insulting your intelligence. This is like clearly just lying. If you don't know, Renee, don't do a video. If you don't know, don't do a video. It's simple. You don't have to pretend to know stuff. You don't know. You don't know who God is. I understand you're ignorant. You don't know who God is. You have a false God. You have a the Catholic Trinity idol. You're a polytheist. I get it. I understand you want God to be a white man. That's why you draw three white. That's why you do your videos showing the white man. That's why you're just talking about the pilot papers. And then the pilot papers are like, we saw Jesus and he had blonde, his blonde, light blonde hair. Not like the others that were around him with dark hair. I'm like, wow, this is so authentic. <laughs> God can come fashion the likeness of anyone. I mean, just 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 the complete bogusness of what Renee is saying right now. Listen to what she's saying. If he comes in the form in the but you can see God face to face if he comes in the form of a person or for instance if he comes in the form of a person inside a burning bush. So when it says face to face, that here's how you guys have to see God. This is really strange for a person who teaches, uh, says she's all about soteriology first. Um, um, look at this guys. I'm going to show you this. If our gospel be hid, it's hidden to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded them. Listen, blinded the minds of them, which what? Believe not. Right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Listen, here it is. Here's how you can see him. The gospel is the image of God. There it is. There it is. He comes fashioned as a man, but faith comes by hearing and you got to see it by what faith, right? But if you don't see it, it's just because you're self-deceived. It talked about willfully ignorant. 
Renee is willfully ignorant. She's like literally just making up stupidity right now. She cannot let go of her lies and she's just making up stupid stuff. She went full. She said, God is a spirit. Then she says, well, he can come if he comes in the form of a person. So now what are you saying? How will we, how will anyone recognize if he can just keep changing forms? How will we recognize him? If he can come in the form, I mean, in what, what does he have to come in a specific color? Does it have to be in a certain height? Can he come in the form of a man, a woman? Does he come in the form of a so-called blank? Can he come in the form of a so-called white? Can he come in the form of a Mexican? Can he come in the form of, you know, his Filipino? Can he come in the form of Chinese? I mean, I mean, how, if he, if God is not a man, that he shall lie, neither son of man, that he should repent, but he can come in the likeness of a man in the likeness in the form of the son of man and there's many fashions of the son of man then how will they know when he gets here oh it's through the gospel that's the image the image of god then when you believe you're an angel and you're you're in heaven your angel does always behold the face of the father that's why i say he that abides in him sin and not whosoever sinneth who notice it says see renee didn't go to this verse notice renee renee avoided this like the plague renee i see what you're trying to do but renee how do you explain this because it says this whosoever sinneth had not seen him many people saw the man jesus christ so it's saying basically no sinners will ever see him ever see him but notice what this says <laughs> See, Renee, even the spirit of truth whom the world uh oh cannot receive uh oh uh oh because it seeth him not he maketh his angels ministering spirits right because it seeth him not neither knoweth him uh oh whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth had not seen him neither known him but ye know him <laughs> for he dwelleth with you seen of angels and shall be i'll never leave you nor forsake you shall be in you whosoever born of god does not commit sin for his seed because his seed remains in me he cannot sin you see how renee's changing it see how she's changing the rules uh first she said it was hyperbole then she was like well this is kind of hyperbole and then she says well in a sense you know and now she's saying well it, he can if 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 he's in the form of a man, but if you see a man, you're not, God is not a man. So you're not seeing God. And then you say, well, and how many forms of man can he come in? So now you're admitting God can come. So, okay. So, all right. So that means he's here now. That means he's here now. Oh my goodness. Renee, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Oh my goodness. Renee, apparently to you apparently Renee, Renee, let me tell you something. Guys, this is a newsflash. Renee is not the savior. She's not the head, the savior of the body, but she's pretending to be. Isn't that weird? Isn't it odd how she's confused about how this works, but yet she's claiming to be all about salvation? She doesn't know that she's not the head, the savior of the body, that she has to have Christ in her to get other people saved. That he's has to, that we're supposed to say that Renee, if you are saved, you're saying that God's coming fashion in the likeness of Renee. And it's not you speaking, Renee. It's the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth who's speaking, right? God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. You see how when Renee got in a question, she got in a bind. She had to pretend to say it's not a contradiction and then go to say God is a liar. She basically said it's not a contradiction and then proceeded to call God a liar. I saw him face to face, but then it says no man has seen God in John. It means in his natural state. Only Jesus Christ, who came from the Father, has seen the Father in all his glory. But I just showed that Jesus is the Father. It says, come, I'll show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. He took me in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me Jerusalem above as free as Mother Basal. So the Lamb's bride is mother of us all which makes the lamb jesus the father and he's the head the spirit and the bride the savior of the body say come god is a spirit named jesus you said that at the beginning of your video right and i thought you said that 
Jesus was God, but you included the flesh. But now you're stuck because people saw the man Jesus. In fact, he died. And remember, they saw the body that had the wounds in the hands. And that's a mortal body, as it says in Romans 8, 11. Right. That's all it means. Remember, it says if you've seen him, you you have not sinned. Let, let's go back because Renee is saying that's all it means. Renee has not answered the question. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. So whosoever abideth in him has seen him. Okay. Let's go back. I want to hear. I want to hear Renee answer this again. I want to. I'm going to play it for you guys one more time. I challenge anybody to find one piece of information in the Bible that you could prove to be false. Not that you. Easy enough. Genesis 32:30 says that Jacob saw God face to face. Exodus 33 says that Moses saw God face to face. But John 1:18 and 1 Timothy 6:16 both say that no one has ever seen God. So if these verses are true, then these are false, and vice versa. Important to take each scripture in its proper context. There are a lot of things said in scripture that are hyperbole, idioms, figures of speech, and so. It's like saying God is a liar. You guys do understand this. It's, that's like when they just basically saying God is a liar. I can't explain it. Oh, that's exaggeration. Like the hyperbole, you're speaking euphemistically to say God's a liar. So when we look at this, we have to check all the surrounding text and see what it's talking about. Now, this person has uh, seemed to think they have found a contradiction. Now, first of all, I'd like to say that God is a spirit. However, we do see. I laugh at people. See, she has to say God is a spirit. Because she has to explain why it says no man has seen God at any time. But it says which no man has seen nor can see. But now she's going into what? Wait a minute. Now, Renee, now, Renee, now you're getting into modalism. I thought you guys didn't believe in modalism. I mean, it's so the contradiction is so blatant, guys. And it's they sound so stupid, but it's like you cannot convince these guys. It's one thing to be. Everybody starts out ignorant. Everybody starts out ignorant. Don't get me wrong. Everyone starts out ignorant. My whole point with you is Renee has been lying for a very, very long time. I have shown Renee this. Renee has blocked hidden comments, refused to listen, and then pretends to be, I'm open. I don't know everything. So the whole fake humble brag. This is what I hate. I hate the fake humility. That's that hypo hypocritical fake humility is what's most disturbing. It's what it's. It's it's okay to be like ask questions and not know, but the fake humility and while blocking or literally blocking, if you try to go to the so-called church of the eternally secure and they say one of their core doctrines is the Trinity and they try to explain hypostatic union, go ask Renee, what's hypostatic union? Explain it to me again. Explain to me how hypostatic union ties into what you're saying right here. Because remember, you guys say one person, two natures, one person, two natures. And tell me about those two natures, because you said it's co eco didn't ask. Is that two? The, so the one person, which includes the two natures, is that co-equal, co-eternal? Because you could see the na you could see one of those so-called natures and one of those so-called natures died. So how can it be co-eternal and co-equal? It makes absolutely no sense. This is why the so-called Roman Catholic Church, which is colonizers, white supremacist uh, doctrine, murdered and killed people for not believing their lie because they knew they just wanted to use it for political worldly gain, which is what Zionism is. It's just the same old stupidity. Zionism, Islam, the fake Abrahamic, three fake Abrahamic faiths. They're all about colonization. And you look in all of them, they all enslaved people. And then the so-called people claim to be something not. They're trying to hide their history of enslaving people. They're really, they're really trying to hide it. And that's why they're all quick to jump in the front and do a photo op when anytime civil rights, because they say, ooh, how do we cover for our role? Get in front, join hand in hand and say you was always there and part of the civil rights movement. Like they want to be a part of every, let's be a part of the civil rights struggle. They try to play both sides of it. That's their little trick, playing both sides of everything. That's their little trick. I'm going to play. I'm going to be the friend and the foe. 
And then when things get hot, then I'll be like, hey, I was always involved in trying to get. But meanwhile, they sabotage it as long as they can. And only when they have to relent, then they jump and they say, OK, shut it down. Now let's get out in front and do the pictures of us being pro MLK and pro this and pro that. So bogus. If these people really truly were about, quote unquote, so-called equal rights in this so-called world, they would be the first to say there's no such thing as a chosen race. But they're not doing that now, are they? If every single so-called religious institution, if it believed the truth, would be like, God's no respect to person. No, children of the flesh are not the children of God. God's called the father of spirits. There is no race above all races. They would be the first to denounce that and say, look, that's heretical. You can't believe it. And you can't believe God's three white men. You can't believe it. And they're going to say, well, we're not teaching God's three white men. We're just teaching the white man. And basically is God that God is like a white man, but we're not teaching God as a white man, but we just got pictures of him as a white man. That's not the same thing. It's like, they're, they think you're so stupid. It's like, okay, well, let's just paint the white man black. Well, what the hell? Then they'd be quick. Like, what, what, what you talking about? Paint the black. That's stupid. So you know what it's about. Because soon as you try to apply a paint filter or try to play, you try to hit the, you try to hit the adjustment of the color, then all of a sudden they got a lot to say about it. So, you know, they're bogus. You know, it's all about what this world, they have an idol. They have an idol. People who believe the Trinity, whether they want to admit it to, to admit to themselves or not, they just think essentially there's a people who think God is a white man, that the white man is God, the savior of the world. That is exactly why they're like, he has a chosen race and we don't believe in replacement theology. And that's why they fight so strongly for it. That's why you can't go to your checkout line during certain times of the year without seeing a National Geographic, a time with a white man who they claim to be Jesus on the front cover. <laughs> and God is like, uh, God has already said, you're not supposed to make any image. Deuteronomy, I think it's, is it four? Let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know if I can. See, they want to, they want all the promises, but they want to apply the promises to this world. They don't, they don't care about heavenly things. This is why they do it. They just lie and they say, well, oh, it's not, it's not about heavenly things. Really. It's about this world. That's what they want it to be. Lest she corrupt yourself and make a graven image. This is the Trinity graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. This is exactly what the Trinity does. Any figure you think these guys care about this? No, they don't care. Their, their, their desire for, for power and control supersede any, any, any notion of believing on the one true God, a spirit named Jesus. They, they can't, they're like, no. God manifesting in forms in the Old Testament. We call them Christophanies, but we. Manifesting in forms. Forms of what, Renee? <laughs> manifesting in the flesh, you mean? God is a spirit who comes manifest in the flesh, but you don't count the flesh as being God? Is that what you're trying to say, Renee? Without saying it? That God comes with two angels. In the form of men. Oh, the ministering spirits. In the form of men. Be careful to entertain strangers for some of you unbeknownst have entertained angels unawares. And they sit down and eat with Abraham. You can't, but you can't eat. You can't eat at the Lord's table in, in the table of devils. So how did Abraham see him? How did Abraham eat with him? Right? He that committed sin is of the devil. You can't serve two masters. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Oh, wait a minute. Manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels. So Abraham saw God face to face in a sense. Okay? And there's no, it doesn't say in a sense. It doesn't say in a sense. It says these little ones. It says in heaven. They always do behold the face of God. But what it means when it says 
Moses talk to God face to face as a friend would. It just means in a. It means he believed the gospel. He was born again. He wasn't in the flesh, but in the spirit. He's a ministering spirit, which means he's an angel. That's what it means. That's what it means. Because it says friendship with the world is empty against God. Love not the world, nor the things in the world. If any man love a mother, father, wife, children, self, lands, houses, the whole world, the love of the father is not in him. Right? That's what it's talking about. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness. Found in him having not my own righteousness close intimate manner uh see renee instead you notice in this whole video renee's never saying oh let me just explain to you oh once you're born again you're not in the flesh but in the spirit so now you're a ministering spirit those are called angels and it says we're all ministering spirits sent forth to minister those who should be heirs of salvation but since flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of god that's why it says he took us he took me in a, in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me what Jerusalem, the bride, the lamb's wife, who's mother of us all. And, you know, that's what it's talking about. But Renee never gets to, oh, the children of the flesh are on children of God. God's called the father of spirits. Oh, scene of angels. God told Moses that no one could see his face and live. What that means is. But the Trinity has three faces. <laughs> so Jesus like if you see me you've seen the father okay so I've seen you okay so I've seen you now that I've seen you and I've seen the father who service sin has not seen now that I've seen you I abide in you and I don't sin because I've seen you you see how they try to get around see how they tried to get around that verse it doesn't work it says whosoever sinneth had not seen him neither known him but Jesus said if you've seen me you've seen the father so now you have to deny that Jesus is God. But there's a problem because Stephen, when he was stoned, called upon God saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then it says Jesus is the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, only wise God. If you've seen me, you've seen the father, but you're the only wise God. Are you saying you're the father? If you've seen me, you've seen the father. What do you mean? If I've seen you, I'm, I'm standing, but I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here right here with you. What do you mean? If like, imagine sitting across from somebody saying, if you've seen me. <laughs> doesn't work for them no one could observe God in all his glory in his natural state and survive it she's just saying that I think what she's trying to say is she's trying to say her trinity she's trying to keep her trinity really bad and I don't know if that means she thinks that his skin is so white I don't know what she I don't know what Renee's saying because she you know, she does. She said God's a spirit, but she didn't. She didn't denounce. She didn't say anything about well, the flesh of Jesus isn't God. Notice she notice what she did not say. See, this is how many people who lie they say affirming statements without saying. Well, I never said that he that the flesh wasn't. Right. This is how people. This is how some. This is how people operate. It's always this little play of nuance. Uh, in the scriptures, it says he's an all consuming fire. So certain things have to be done for a mortal person. That's why it says, I'll bring a third. He said, I'll try them as silver is tried. I'll bring a third part through the fire. What do you mean? Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter. What do you mean? He took me to a great and high mountain in the what? Spirit. Be in the presence of immortal, eternally existing, self-existing, all powerful. She said immortal. Immortal means can't die. Do you actually understand the words that you're saying? Because the man Jesus did die. That's the flesh made of a woman, made a law, made to be sin. And apparently if he can come in the form or the fashion of one person, he can come in the form and the fashion of any person who's believed. And I know you may not understand this, Renee, but people, many, there's many fashions of people. Therefore, if he can come in the form of Abraham, since he's no respect of person, he can come in the form of anyone. Even the darkest Nigerian. Even, you know, whatever. 
God Almighty. So with that. But you don't believe Isaiah 9, 6. <laughs> you don't believe he's the everlasting father, wonderful counselor, right? <laughs> you don't believe he's the prince. You don't believe you, you believe the Trinity. See, this is the thing about the Trinitarians. They say something and they forget is when they get a question they can't answer they they sound like they sound like idiots because they they say stuff and they're not even sticking to what they said they believed she started this out god is a spirit and i'm telling you right now people will not ask renee questions they will not call her out on this contradiction they will not call her out on this contradiction said let's just look at the scriptures real quick you and he actually says this clearly in Exodus, okay, that you can't look at him and live. But when they're trying to tell you that the Bible's a lie and it's corrupt, they never explain these things. And most of them don't actually know it. They're just looking for things to pick at to destroy your faith because they don't have it. So um, Exodus chapter 33, if you go to 20, it says, And he said, Thou cannot see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. So he tells them, I'll let you see the back of me as I pass by. So you can see some of my glory. Okay. That, that's what it means. But you can see God face to face if he comes in the form of a person. Or for instance, if he comes in the form of a person inside a burn. So when we look at Renee... And she says it's Christ. She says it's God. The work. Let, let me. Let me. Let me. Let me tell y'all why, why this is so dumb. <laughs> I'll explain you why it's so stupid. Like Renee thinks you're an idiot. I'm sorry. Like I. Like I. I can't be. I just can't anymore with Renee. For it is God which worketh in you to do unto will of His good pleasure. Guys, it is God which worketh in you to do and to will of his good pleasure. For it is God that worketh. So you've seen, you've seen his face now. Oh, that's right. The gospel, which is the image of God, <laughs> the gospel. For our gospel, we hit is blind to the what? Mind. Guys, you guys have to explain where is God right now? 